and welcome back everyone to the video series Dedicate Show on Paramount Plus that has crowned its new All-Stars Champion. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge All-Stars Season 4, Episode 12, the finale, the final, and I'm just gonna say it right off the bat, this final was something else. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of checkpoints, but I feel like The Challenge overcorrected itself in a way where it's like they just took major steps down so that this final would be doable for a lot of the contestants no matter who made the final. I think because of that, this final lacked the difficulty of the past three All-Star seasons, as well as I think it hurt itself creatively. Because I was so hyped for this final after the first two checkpoints we got to see in episode 11 with the shooting star challenge and the electric star checkpoint. I mean, the electric star isn't anything groundbreaking, but... To me, at least there was some creativity and it was unique. Lo and behold, it was kind of downhill from there, at least in the aesthetics department. I mean, none of these were very fun to watch. Some of them were confusing and the framing and blocking for the cameras for these certain checkpoints made no sense. But I'm getting way too ahead of myself. Let's start off where last episode left off and that was everybody completing the electric star checkpoint where it was announced two worst competitors were Derek and Laurel and one of them was going to be purged it was a to be continued until this episode right off the bat TJ says Derek you're eliminated from the final and he's about to head out the door but then TJ's like hold on you have a star and there's a twist in this final where if you're eliminated you have to give your star to someone else where the stars will give that person a major advantage in day two of the final if they were to make it to day two. Before Derek leaves, he gives his star to Laurel. Now, luckily, I listened to the Challenge Official podcast where Derek was a guest, and he said explicitly that him and Laurel got very close over the season. If not for listening to that podcast episode, I would have no idea how close Derek and Laurel got over the course of this season. We saw zero conversations between them. I mean, we had to watch so many scenes of Nicole and Laurel's shenanigans, yet we couldn't see one conversation between Derek and Laurel to establish that, hey, at the end, when they're in the final and Derek is leaving and he has to give his star to someone, he gives it to Laurel because they got so close. We the flashback bits that they showed was just Derek and Laurel winning that one daily challenge where they're paired up with each other, the run the plank challenge. Last episode's challenge to win stars. They have no other footage that they show where they establish a friendship. But I'm going to put a pin in that as Derek is the first one to be purged from the final. We move on to the next advantage checkpoint, which is called Spicy Foot. The point is that the first person to eat all 10 of their peppers that are hanging by a string will win an advantage. Now it's called spicy foot because they have their arms tied behind their back and the line controlling how far the peppers go is tied to everybody's foot and they have to raise their foot to lower the peppers. What is this checkpoint? I get you need to have an eating checkpoint, but this is goofy. Goofy beyond all-stars level of goofy that I want to see. You have players that can't handle spicy very well, like Ace and Kara. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Nicole is able to win this advantage. The next checkpoint, the elimination checkpoint, which is balance for survival. To me, spicy foot and balance for survival, not the best naming conventions. Balance for survival, everybody is going to be putting on this rig with a tray in front of them and you have to put a glass of red water on your tray and then use the pulley system to get the water glass up to your mouth and then spit it into a little tube where you have to make the liquid hit the line. The slowest to do this will be eliminated. I saw this challenge in every promo and I did not expect it to be in the final. I instantly thought, where are we? Are we, is this big brother? I thought we were watching the challenge. This is exactly something I feel like we would see on big brother. Again, it's goofy. There is no movement to it. Yes, it's hard with the pulley system. It's the imbalance of the goofy while also 
trying to take this stuff seriously and we're in the final. I just think that you could have thought of something way better than this. Or I would have hoped you would have thought of something way better than this. I did not like Balance for Survival and Spicy Foot whatsoever. Nicole's advantage is that the line is way lower than everybody else's. And despite her having a way lower line, Laurel absolutely crushes this, gets so much liquid in her tube that she finishes way before everybody. Nicole is second, Ace is third, Kara is fourth, Steve is fifth, and it comes down between Veronica and Leroy. Laurel is putting all of her eggs in Veronica's basket. She thinks Leroy is very big competition in this final, and she would rather see Veronica move on. So she is giving every single tip and pointer for Veronica to help her win this, and she does. Leroy is purged. He gives his star to Steve because Steve had the hardest road to get here. After this elimination checkpoint, they wait until night falls to get to the next advantage checkpoint, which is called Hose Ball. This is the final advantage checkpoint and will be played in pairs. Everybody will be using a fire hose to push a ball into a goal. They each have a designated goal that they have to try to get the ball into to score a point. The first team to score two points will win the advantage into the next elimination checkpoint, which is the last elimination checkpoint, meaning that this will be a double elimination. Ace pairs up with Kara, Laurel pairs up with Nicole, and Steve pairs up with Veronica. No surprise on who paired up with whom. My problem with this checkpoint is that this is an individual final. There is only one winner. Why are we pairing up? And not only that, one person from each pair doesn't even do anything but hold the back of the hose. That makes no sense to me. This is an individual final. There's only one winner. Why are we pairing up? For the sake of time? This is a challenge I think looks good on paper and in concept. But when they actually play the game, you can barely see anything with these fire hoses going as powerful as they are. They do the best to kind of try to frame everything from all different angles. But again, it's hard to see. And we don't know where the ball is going or who's controlling the ball or which hose is hitting the ball until the ball actually rolls into a goal. And then on the bottom, it just says, oh, this person scored. Now, don't get me wrong. The concept is interesting. The game could have been fun to watch. I like that they did it at night. I love that TJ dressed up as TJ Lavender doing his best Ron Burgundy impression. But to me, it was really hard to follow the action. Steve is worried about Laurel getting any more advantages. He is trying to help out his best friends of Ace and Kara. So he is just trying to get on Laurel and Nicole's nerves, getting in front of them, trying to block the ball, trying to block their stream. It ends up that Kara and Ace get the first goal. Nicole is upset to where in the second round, she is just blasting Steve and even kind of hits him in the face, it looks like. I don't know. I can barely see what's going on. TJ has to yell down, hey, no spraying in the face. And then somehow Ace blows the ball into the goal for a second time, meaning Kara and Ace win, get the last advantage heading into the double elimination night portion. After this checkpoint, about two hours pass when TJ brings them in and tells them of the final elimination checkpoint called Bluff Night. In Bluff Night, there are three rooms with three different tasks. In this checkpoint, you're trying to pick the task that you think you can do the quickest. Now, order matters here because each task can only be attempted twice. So once two people complete a task, the door is closed. So this is a huge advantage for Kara and Ace. Now you might be thinking, what are the checkpoints that these people could do? Well, you got in room number one, you have nailed it. Where you have nails in a stump and you're just trying to knock down three nails into the stump. Room number two is called Marble Blast where you just roll a ball down a ramp and try to get it off the course on the other side through a specific tiki head. And in room number three, it's called firearm. Your arm is set on fire using a specific protective glove and then you also have gel on top of your arm so nothing bad can happen. You use that fire glove to light four stars on fire and then you take rope balls and try to set four of them on fire 
on each flaming star. Out of all three of these rooms, the most time and effort and creativity and uniqueness was put into Firearm, as that was the most interesting challenge. Unfortunately for us, Kara and Ace, who go one and two in the order, do it very quickly and we're left with hammering nails in a stump and rolling a ball down a ramp, which again, looks like a big brother challenge to me. I mean, can I just ask, what is the point of the decor in the marble blast? I can understand if it was star themed, or if this challenge took place in like Hawaii. It's like the challenge needed decorations, they went to a party city and the most decorations they had was tiki and fake palm trees. And they just said, that, that'll that do. Let's put it up and it'll be fine. I don't understand, I don't get this. As I mentioned, for the advantage, Kara or Ace could go first in the order. Ace said, be my guest, Kara, this is your game. You go ahead. She does firearm. Once Kara was done, she goes and tells Ace, do firearm. Ace comes back and then tells Steve, it's all on you. Steve goes in checks out Marble Blast, thinks it's gonna be way too hard, so he does Nailed It, which is a very difficult challenge for him as fatigue was setting in, he says that his arm was locking up, but he gets it done. It seems like it takes him a very long time. Steve comes back, picks Veronica to go next. Veronica does Marble Blast, and the way it's edited makes it seem like Marble Blast is super easy. They show Veronica doing a couple of rolls and she sinks this. I thought she had it in the bag and Steve was in trouble, which I have to say, kudos to the editing because they got me on that one. But Veronica is unsure of how well she did compared to everybody else because it sounds like once somebody does the challenge, they hold them in the back for over an hour before they let them rejoin everybody and let them pick somebody else as time was just ticking away and they don't want people thinking like, oh, Kara was gone for four minutes. I have to beat four minutes. So production was really trying to hide everybody's time by making everybody sit in the back for way longer than them just completing the task, which I think is actually really good. A plus for production for doing that, trying to keep everybody's time a mystery. Veronica comes back, picks Nicole to go next. She looks at Nailed It, doesn't like it, does Marble Blast. She seems to really struggle at this as Laurel is last up and she has to do Nailed It. Now, even though Laurel has been waiting for hours upon hours, but once she's in the room and locked in, I think she envisions Kara's head as the nail head and she is just pounding these things in and she, again, cruises through this. She rejoins everybody else and TJ lets everybody know of the results that the two players to do Marble Blast and Veronica and Nicole, they have been eliminated. Apparently that was the worst room to do. So Nicole and Veronica are both eliminated. They both have to give their stars to somebody else. Of course, Nicole gives her star to Laurel and before heading out, Veronica gives her star to Laurel. Now we are down to four players, Kara, Steve, Ace, and Laurel, where Kara and Ace have one star each, Steve has two stars, and Laurel has a whopping four stars. It's getting really late, everybody's exhausted, and TJ makes them go sleep in a cargo net. Everybody wakes up, gets into the RV, TJ drives them to the start of day two, which looks a little bit more reminiscent to an actual final, where they have to go a distance, do a whole bunch of tasks in the heat, in the sun, and then run to the finish line. Now, day two starts off with everybody getting on scooters, going down the hill, getting to what they call a star loop, and they have to do tasks over and over and over again. The way they have to do it is that they have to do point one on the star first. Then for the second loop, they have to start again at point one, they go to point two. Then to do the third loop, they have to go back to point one, then do point two again, and then do point three. Then for a fourth loop, they have to go to point one again, then point two, then point three, then point four. I'm saying this explicitly because the first time I heard this, I did not understand this. I thought that this day two was going to be ran similarly to War of the Worlds Final, where they'll get on their scooters, run down, do a task, then have to get back on their scooters, go a distance, come back, then do another task that they didn't previously do, and keep doing that until they did all their laps and did all the tasks, and then they would run to the finish line. 
But that's not how this is. And I was confused until I re-listened to this like three different times and then watching the star loop basically twice in a row to pretty much nail down. Yes, on the bottom of the screen, it says this person's on loop one, this person's on loop two, this person's on loop three. But with so many people doing the same tasks over and over again and being on so many different loops, it got me confused. I don't know if it got anybody else confused. If you were confused by this star loop, with the instructions or how it was edited, please let me know down in the comment section below that I'm not the only one. TJ also lets everybody know what stars mean in this final. Stars mean you can skip a task. You can use one of your stars to skip one task per lap. So in point one, you have to either eat a cockroach or drink this disgusting frog juice. You can put a star on there and you can bypass that for that one loop. But when you come back to it, you either have to play another star to bypass it, or you have to eat. I don't like the way stars are used in this final. This just reinforces this whole friendship alliance, friends are everything in the challenge type of mindset. I get that making social ties and having friends and alliances in the game are important, and you want people to understand how important they are. But to me, these stars, and handing them out to friends during the final just reestablishes and tells everybody after the season, hey, make sure you keep your friends close and bring them to the final. Even if it doesn't make sense for your game and you could possibly lose because you brought them to the final or never decided to make a big move on your way to the final, at least have your friends there because they can hand you a star. They can share the money with you. It's kind of ridiculous. On day two of a final, I want it to be just a straight up competition. If the person is the best of the best and are going to win, I want to see them just win based off of their abilities, not how many stars they got from their friends on their way to get here. Let's go into the star loop. The first point is you have to either drink this frog juice or eat a cockroach. Then the second checkpoint is this pipe puzzle which is like a famous app. Next one is stacking rocks. Then complete a giant challenge all-stars puzzles. And the final task is that you have to get harnessed up and then throw rings onto a hook. And you're supposed to swing yourself onto them, but then you could just like throw the rings as we'll see Steve do. Of course, Laurel with four stars got out to a very early lead. She kept on using all of her stars on the pipe puzzle because she felt like it was gonna take the longest to complete. So in loop two, three, and four, she would just use her star on the pipe puzzle. Then on the final loop, she finally did the pipe puzzle, which did seem to give her a little bit of trouble. And because everybody else kept on doing the pipe puzzle, including Steve, he was able to make up quite a bit of ground as he had the pipe puzzle pretty much memorized by the time he got to it on his final loop. Steve tied things up with Laurel on loop five, where he was able to finish stacking the rocks before Laurel could. Steve was going to the fourth task and decided to use one of his stars because he held on to his two stars on his final loop. Because if he held on to the last two stars, he thought, I could use it on the last two tasks and then I could just make my way, run to the finish line, and cash in that $250,000 check. But this is Steve's first final. This was a huge mental lapse that he misremembered the rules where TJ said that you can use one star per lap. So Steve, on his final lap, having two stars, took the lead, put the star on the puzzle, on the all-stars puzzle, went to go grab his second star to use it on the final task, and a producer says, you use your star for this lap. You have to do the final task, which makes you harness into this like harness and wire. So Steve having to get harnessed into this thing destroyed all of his momentum, his lead that he had on Laurel, because Laura was saving her star so that she didn't have to do the final task. And she just drops off her star and takes off for the finish line. Kara also used her last star to bypass the final task. So Steve went from first to third just like that. Laurel is way out ahead. At one point you see Laurel kind of like look back to see if anybody is around her and Kara is nowhere to be seen. I haven't been mentioning Ace at all and I actually forgot a rule where TJ said that only three people can cross the finish line. If you're the last person remaining at your tasks while the other three take off, you're just purged and eliminated from the game, which I 
knew was coming. $50,000 does not divide evenly three times. So I had a feeling that only three people were able to cross the finish line, and I was absolutely correct. Ace had a real tough time eating those cockroaches, knowing that they're in a vial somewhere and that they should be running free amongst nature, that he could not get this pipe puzzle done. He got it done once and then instantly forgot it on the next loop and then he lets all the cockroaches go. Laurel crosses the finish line first, wins, gets $250,000, Kara gets second place and $25,000, and Steve gets third place and also $25,000. I know I got heated and rambled in certain points of this final, and I know I said that this was not one of my favorite finals to watch, or it's not one of my favorite finals at all. I think it's by far my least favorite amongst the All-Stars finals. Luckily, it doesn't seem like there was that much tomfoolery, like there was an All-Stars 2 final where there was that big controversy of a missing fourth step, but at the same time, this final overall was not fun to watch. It was kind of confusing at certain points, the camera blocking did not make sense, and I don't like how the stars were used. But putting my criticisms of this final and format aside, I wanna say congratulations to Laurel because she came in played the game, and even though I don't agree with some of the things Laurel has said or done or wasn't a huge fan of how she played some of the game, she played the game that was set up in front of her. She took the risk that she felt she needed to. They worked out for her. She clearly made some real strong social bonds over the course of the season, and she was able to keep small details in her mind and play the stars correctly in that star loop. And then I think having all of those stars, like, no pun intended, but having all of those stars aligned for Laurel in this final, and even right before this final, and having the ability to get another star in episode 11, really played well into her hand. Kara and Steve did a fantastic job going into multiple eliminations. They both had really strong performances over the course of the season and in the final, but that is it for not only this video, but All Stars 4. I spent a lot of this video giving my opinions of the final and how I felt about the format and the games that were played. Now I wanna turn it over to you. What'd you think about this episode? What'd you think about this final overall? What'd you think about the checkpoints? And what do you think about the format and how the stars were used? Did you like this final? Let me know why down in the comment section below. Did you not like this final? Let me know why down in the comment section below. What did you think about the stars? Did you think the format was interesting? Would you want to see this format used in a later season down the line? Let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below. And I also want to mention that on Monday, June 24th, I'll be going live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time doing a live stream where we're going to wrap up the season, finally close the book on it, We'll go over the competitors, the cast, the format, the drama, the daily challenge, the elimination, giving out grades. You can tell me what you thought about each and every point of this season live. And let's just have a fun conversation, officially closing up this season as we turn our attention to the future. And hopefully season 40 will be announced very, very soon. So if you would like to join the live stream that's happening on YouTube on this channel, that's June 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't worry, I'll put out a reminder and a post on the community tab as we get closer to Monday, but I just wanted to let everybody know, and I'm sure I'll get into some rants and ramblings during that live stream. Probably more than I put in this video. I'm sure I cut out a good amount of them in this video. But now I wanna give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelkbids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.